like doing that. It's just wake one or two people up. This is very good. Even myself as well. Right, thank you very much for coming to tonight's meeting of planning committees. My name's Andy Crump. I will be chairing tonight's meeting. Um, before we start, a little bit of housekeeping, please. Could we make sure our phones are either on silent or switched off? Uh, because there's nothing worse than a speaker being interrupted by the sounds of Andy Pandy, The Great Escape, or anything, other tune, whatever tune you've got. And I'll turn mine off just to make sure as well. Uh, as a parent, my children often say, do as I say, not as I do. But on this case, I will try and not adhere to that. Um, also, it might be very, very tempting to interrupt a speaker. But please, could you give them the courtesy of not interrupting? And the only people allowed to speak are the people on the registered list. So please, could you not interrupt, however tempting it may be. Even if it's me, please don't interrupt. Um, I'd like to introduce the top table. Olivia Quinn, Committee Services. Mason Ash Legal Services. Good evening, my name is Dale Barker. I'm a planning manager. In my role as an impartial advisor to the committee, I can clarify any planning issues that arise. Doing so, I'm bound by the Code of Professional Conduct of the RTPI. Planning committee members are not bound by the case officer's recommendation or by any oral advice we may give. Anthony Young, Senior Planner. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Move on to the first item on the agenda, which is apologies for absence. Chair, apologies from Councillor Parry and Councillor O'Donnell. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Councillor Ryan, yes, sir. My apologies, I will be leaving at 7.30. Thank you very much. Disclosures of interest. Councillor Fielding. Uh, as an orbit tenant, I have to declare that, and also I have received documentation with regards to the number five of the, if you want the number, eight nineteen zero 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 five. 5 Out. Yeah. Five, five, eight. Can you just... Yeah. Um, gentlemen, can you come... Councillor Fennell, can you put your mic... Uh, will you be speaking? You're, you're okay, you're not, you won't be withdrawn. Mm -hmm. No, I won't be saying anything. I, I, have no, I, um, I have no interest whatsoever in it, and uh, therefore I will be as a member of the committee. Yeah, you, you, so you basically come to the committee with an open mind. Very. Good man. Thank you. Problem. That was the phrase we were looking for. Thank, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chairman. Um, the first application uh, for Willett House uh, in Wellsbourne. I'm a member of Wellsbourne Parish Council. Um, this came to the council a long time ago. I always abstain when it's on uh, for the other patch. So I come to this with an open mind and I'm happy to sit on the committee. Thank you very much. Councillor Barnes, I'm sorry, we cut you off there. Uh, well, yes, I have had correspondence on the second one, 0005. Yeah, I think, I think we all have, yeah, thank you. If we can note that, please, Olivia. Didn't you have that one? <laughs> thank you. I'm sure you'll uh, join, join with us later, Councillor Saint. We value your contribution, thank you. Right. Uh, of February. Uh, Councillor Brian, are we with us today? Sorry? Are you happy that we signed the meeting a minutes of the 6th of February? No, I'm not. Ah, oh, good man. Thank you. I think we've got a proposal in a second of Councillor Barnes and Councillor Fielden. On the, all those in favour? <laughs> Thank you. You know, yeah. Yeah. Happy to uh, sign those later. We'll now move to the first item on the agenda, which is application 18 slash 00977 FUL, Willett House, Stroke Garages, Willett Gardens, St Peter's Road, Hastings Road, Wellsbourne, Stratford upon Avon. Demolition of properties of, at Willett House, etc. Uh, Anthony is our presenting officer. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, so, uh, the first slide up is um, uh, an image of uh, um, Wellsbourne as it sits in the landscape, and you can see the black dot in the middle, so it's a very central uh, development to the, to, to, to the settlement. 
And here we have uh, the three red edges. Um, so the, the, the development is spread over three sites. Uh, the main site is what's referred to as Willett's, Willett Gardens, uh, which is a, a sheltered housing scheme built circa 1960. And the small, smaller sites are um, parking courts of the same era. Uh, and this is all for de demolition and for redevelopment. And here we have the red edge again, and next to that is the proposed layout. So as you can see, the large Willett Garden site is taking the bulk of the development, and the smaller sites are three, three dwellings in forms of terraces uh, on the old uh, garage parking sites. The purple line here just on the left-hand plan uh, denotes the extent of the conservation area. And just out of um, plan site there where I'm moving the cursor, there are uh, two listed buildings. So just to give members a sample of the, um, the style of housing that's to be demolished, there we see uh, Willett Gardens along the left-hand side of the slide and uh, the photographs of the, um, the, 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 the garages to be demolished. And I thought I'd include the accesses to those garage sites so it gives members a, 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 a contextual um, idea of where, they, where they're sitting within the estate. Um, some street scene views. Um, so they're quite simple, simple in form and detailing, and so uh, appropriate to the, the style of de development there, uh, dating, as I say, from the 60s, so fairly plain and simple. And there we go with a, a larger scale plans, uh, with a bit of a contemporary twist to them. Aren't, uh, and here we have a street scene, so existing at the top, and you can just see the, uh, the bungalows just receding there into the background um, of, of Willett Gardens, and they will be replaced by the proposed development, so members can see how they will sit within the street scene. And the flats are just out, just, just through filtered views there, through the, that foliage, and you can see the, the new, new houses there on, on the left, and as I say, going down the right-hand side. Um, so the, the uh, recommendation is to approve members subject to conditions and subject to a section 106 for various contributions and subject to an update um, which uh, because of the NDP requirement, uh, the NDP was adopted during the course of considering this application and um, ND, NDP uh, policy WW8 requires a proportion of the houses to be um, bungalows um, and that amounts to two bungalows which have now been incorporated into the layout and they will be given priority for um, elderly and those with disabilities and it's just to um, make members aware that that will be um, reflected in the section 106 um, so that, uh, that those, those individuals are prioritised. Thank you Chair. All right, thank you Anthony. Um, Whilst Bourne Parish Council um, were due to speak, uh, however, they're not able to attend. They've asked me to read out a uh, slight email here, a small email. Uh, it is unfortunate that due to unforeseen circumstances, the Parish Council will not be able to attend the East Area Planning Committee site and would like it known to the committee that we would have asked Councillor Parry to represent the Parish Council's opinion on its behalf, but that she is also otherwise engaged. The Parish Council sends apologies to the committee for not being able to attend and represent itself on this occasion. So if we could note that, please. Um, now we'll move on to our first speaker, which is Stephanie Hawkins, please. Good evening. Hey, you've got three minutes. Would you like a warning with about 30 seconds to go, or have you timed it to perfection? I think it's timed. It should be. All right. We'll look forward to that then. I'll, I'll be on the stop with John. <laughs> thank you very much. Far away when you're ready. Okay, thank you. Chair, members of planning committee, thank you for the opportunity to speak. I'm Stephanie Hawkins, an associate planner at Barton Wilmore. I'm here on behalf of the applicant, Orbit, and speak in support of the application for the redevelopment of Willett House and garages at St Peter's Road and Hastings Road to provide 35 new homes. 
Willett House is an outdated sheltered housing development comprising small properties that are difficult to let and not economically viable to reconfigure or update, especially with Orbit's new extra care scheme at Eddington Lodge. The garages do not cater for modern vehicles and are underused. Orbit seek to revitalise these brownfield sites that are located within a residential area of Wellsbourne to provide a range of new homes and improve housing choice in the local area and contribute to a balanced and sustainable community. The application was submitted following pre-application consultation with your officers, the parish council, local community and other key stakeholders. Orbit have continued to work positively with your officers and other stakeholders through the application process, responding to matters raised. This includes an amendment to the scheme to include bungalows. The proposed redevelopment does not increase the number of homes or floor space on the sites. The sites can comfortably accommodate 35 new homes. In keeping with the character of the area, safeguarding the living conditions of occupiers and adjacent residents and delivering site-specific requirements, including parking for each new home and visitors, taking account of your emerging, emerging Development Standards SPD. Through the application process, Orbit has worked with statutory consultees to address all concerns raised, including concerns of the Highway Authority, Lead Local Flood Authority and Waste and Recycling Officer. As a result, the application is before you with no objections from any statutory consultee. Orbit will continue constructive dialogue in bringing forward the proposed development, including with residents adjacent to the sites to ensure any disruption during the construction process is managed. Overall, Orbit are committed to revitalising these sites to improve the neighbourhood and contribute to a thriving community. Orbit deliver well-built quality homes that are energy efficient and future-proofed. Every place Orbit creates is designed for safety and security and is green with landscaping appropriate to the location. In conclusion, the proposal before you represents a high-quality, sustainable development. It accords with the development plan and there are no objections from statutory consultees. It is therefore respectfully requested that members follow the recommendations put forward by their case officer and approve the application. Thank you. Don, you've passed the test. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, any questions? Councillor Barnes, then Councillor Sight, then Councillor Kent. Um, although the board member and the parish aren't here, it says they both said over the development of the site. Is there a mix of houses on the site? Or what's the, what, in your eyes, is the number per hectare? Or? It, the because it's on three sites, isn't it? So it, is a, it is on three sites. It doesn't actually increase the number of dwellings. It's actually a net loss of one unit. Um, and the floor space actually isn't increased at all. So in terms of the built form across those sites, it actually doesn't oh, overdevelop it. Well, that's what, yeah. And the mix, did, did you want the mix as well? The mix is a series of one, two, three, and four bedroom dwellings, majority being two to three bed. Thank you. Mr. Saint. Yeah. Well, I can see. What I can't see from your presentation or from the officer's presentation is where people are going to park their cars. Can you enlighten us there, please? Okay, yes, the parking meets the development requirement standards SPD. There's one parking space for one bed dwellings. These are on in curtilage parking spaces, which is on the layout that we've provided. There's two parking spaces for two and three bed dwellings, and there's four parking spaces for four bed dwellings. The visitor parking is in accordance with standards. Um, there's a total requirement for seven. The SPD allows that to be in courtyards, in curtilage of certain dwellings, and on street. We've got six allocated visitor parking spaces, plus we've got another six properties that have additional parking on that required, and we have the ability for on-street parking. Okay, second question, Chairman. The Parish Council conclude their objection by saying there is still no green open space allocation. On that drawing that we saw that Mr Young put up for his presentation, there are some green areas. Um, would that be open space? There's or can you, can you clarify where the open space will be? There's landscaping. There isn't actually a requirement for public open space in this instance because there is not a net increase in dwellings. Thank you. Councillor Kendall? Thank you, Chairman. <coughs> Good evening. Um, just a couple of questions. 
on the numbers, basically. I just want to try and clarify in my mind what, we're, what you're proposing here. Um, in terms of what is presently there, Willett Gardens, Willett House, that's an, uh, a sheltered care facility. Yes. What was the occupancy of, of that when it was operating? Because I know it's closed down, people are moving out now. Just bear with me. It's all right. There was a total of 36 dwellings on it, um, 32 were one bed and four um, were two bed. Okay, and what, you, only because you mentioned it, and so it's not strictly part of the application, but obviously in terms of providing sheltered care in Wellsbourne as the village as a whole, you've mentioned that obviously there's the move from Willett House and presumably you're trying to move people from that to the new Ettington Lodge. Um, am, I, I am I right? It's really a question for the applicant who's not here, but they have decanted um, and moved out residents. Some have gone to Ettington Lodge, not all have. It's been a choice of people where they wanted to go, and some have actually relocated outside of Wellsbourne to be closer to family. Okay. Uh, well, that was coming to my next question. I was just going to ask, what, do you have any idea what the occupancy of Ettington Lodge is? So are they roughly comparable? I'm sorry, I don't right, know that I just want, um, And in terms of the new houses that are proposed... Um, What's the precise breakdown? You say the mix is one, two, three, and four bed. What are the actual numbers of each? No, she's, you know, all had as a mix, and I want to know precisely how okay. many of each. Do you want it by tenure or just by bedroom? So, uh, just bedroom by bedroom is fine. Bed by bedroom. Just number of bedrooms, so how many one bedroom house? Okay. How many two bedroom? Me. Thanks. <clears throat> Okay, we've got 21 number, one to two beds. Of those, four are one beds. It, sorry, hang on, hang on. It may help members to have a look at page 17 of the report where it's all set out. Oh, that's even that better. you can talk them through it. But also... We'll carry on. Ten number three beds. Ten three. And four yeah. number four beds. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Oh, can I feel it? just in time. I didn't know there was a time limit. Um, with regards to the bungalows for the elderly, uh, I notice you're going to have some for the disabled, but will you also make the bungalows such that wheelchairs can be pushed around within them, or are they going to be um, a bit too tight for that? So, um, we've provided floor plans on it. Um, I don't know whether they actually showed a wheelchair turning circle or not on them. <laughs> Yeah, we can, amongst I think we can clarify that. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah, we'll clarify, clarify that with the officer. Right, Councillor Kendall. Very, very quick. Apologies. Um, have you, the parish council makes no, uh, reference to the flooding that's happened on site a while, quite a long time ago now, actually, but it did require Willett House to be. Before I was a councillor, actually, but it required Willett House to be evacuated at the time. Uh, so the, the site has flooded in the past. Have you taken any additional measures to, um, to avoid flooding? Wait, is this the Willett House? Willett House and, yes, it, all of that area was flooded Cause in, terms in of 2007, I think. The garages, obviously, they're completely yes, hard stand at the moment, so they're okay. going to be um, less, less hard standing on them. The flood risk assessment has looked at flooding. It's mm. considered surface water flooding, and it's got a drainage strategy based on soaker ways that will address those issues. Um, there's no objection from the lead local flood authority. Thank you. Yeah, so I think that's on page 13, isn't it? Yeah. Right, thank you for your comprehensive answers. I think you're free to go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Parry has not been able to attend. I've already touched on that earlier. Um, but I've been asked to read a statement or read uh, a few comments again. <coughs> Excuse me, so bear with me. Um, whilst, I have no, sorry, whilst I have no objection to the development of the Woods House site itself, it is the two separate garage sites that I, have, that I object to, as I feel this is a serious case of overdevelopment as the proposed units are extremely dense in design and totally out of character with the neighbouring communities. Plus, there is a serious concern in respect to flooding and consequently, I urge the committee to refuse the application for these material planning reasons in respect to the garage sites. There have also been extensive objections to these applications 
by many members of the public and it is extremely unfortunate that after so many months of being thrown back at the applicants, concerns raised by WCC Highways and the Flood Team that I find myself unable to attend this evening's Planning Committee. So. Go on, which bit? Could you just repeat the last sentence? <laughs> I'm sure I've read it properly, but I'll try again. There have, there have been extensive objections to this application by many members of the public, and it is extremely unfortunate that after so many months of being thrown back at the applicants, concerns raised by WCC Highways and the Flood Team that I find myself unable to attend this evening's planning committee. Uh, I what you said. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so, you, sometimes you do question yourself whether you've read it properly, but I think I just about read that one okay. Right then, um, obviously you can't ask me any questions on this because I'm reading it out of the ward member. Uh, so we'll move on to points of clarification for the officer. Any points of clarification? Can the same? Microphone, please. Microphone, please, Councillor Saint. Thank you. We're told by the lady from Barton Wilmore that, in fact, the applicant is Orbit Homes. Yet, according to the report we've been given to read before the meeting, the applicant was a Mr. Holt. Can someone explain the link between the two? Uh, it's the name of the individual representing Orbit Homes. Right then, Chairman, would it not have been better to have stated that on the on, on the on the paperwork? Yeah, I think that's I think that's a fair point. Right. My second question is that on the update sheet we have um, a recommendation to complete a Section 106 planning obligation. Um, And uh, about 12 months ago, this council introduced that developer contributions come by virtue of SIL, the Community Infrastructure Levy. So can we have an explanation then, please, as to why a 106 uh, agreement is effectively proposed for this uh, development, if it's approved? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, the, the, the contributions relate to um, contributions towards public rights of way maintenance and upkeep and sustainable travel packs, um, which is information given to future occupiers as to bus services and, and so on in the village. Um, and they really go outside of the scope and remit of the SIL tariff, therefore they're requested separately. Would it be the affordable housing part as well? And that is part of the standard section 106. Yeah. Can the site, please? Can you the microphone, please? We have been told on a piece of paper that 106 planning obligations is to secure financial contributions for the securing affordable housing. When I ask a question about it, Mr. Young starts rambling on about footpaths, if you'll pardon the pun, and uh, therefore I don't see the connection. It's one thing or the other. Now, can we have the, 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 the straight line, sir, please? Yeah, the straight answer is there are two elements, really, to the section 106. One is to ensure that the, the affordable housing is secured in perpetuity, and the second element are two requests for financial contributions uh, relating to public rights of way and sustainable travel packs. Um, I think we'll think we'll move on. I think we've got the other answers to that one. Um, any, any other questions? Councillor Fielding. Just repeating my question about sizes of the non-disabled bungalows. At my age, it's important that you make sure you can get a wheelchair around. Chair, we, we don't happen to have a, um, a, a, co a paper copy of the bungalow layout with us, um, so it would mean having to go onto the, um, onto the system to try and get that on the uh, overhead. Yeah, Chair, we, we can find the information for you. It's going to take us two or three minutes searching on the computer to do that because we don't have a paper copy of the plan. Do you want to spend the time doing that? No, don't worry. To do it? Just if we can, 
whenever, if it goes forward, um, that it's brought, borne in mind in the final PEC documentation. Yeah. Thank you. Can I say? <clears throat> yes. One, one, one more thing, Chairman, about the reference to Highway's uh, opinion, um, which was alluded to in an answer Mr Young gave a moment ago. In the objections from Councillor Parry, it starts talking about the implications for refuse collection. Now, as Mr Barker knows, um, I'm aware that that is covered by the D Department of Transport Manual for Streets. He and I have had conversations about it quite often, and he's nodding in agreement now, for which I'm grateful. So are we going to be satisfied that the challenges that the local ward member perceives over refuse collection are going to be uh, practical? We're told by the lady from Barton Wilmore that we don't have this much or that much or anything else because we're not changing the number of dwellings. Well, the, the, the scheme was designed in the 1960s. The requirements for open space and traffic may have been less than they would be, would be for a scheme that's designed in 2019. Um, therefore, I want to be satisfied that uh, the... Uh, that the movement of vehicles and the refuse collection vehicles around this site is going to be feasible without causing problems. Thank you, Chair. Um, the, the design of the layout has been um, um, very, very heavily involved with um, input from our, the Council's Waste and Recycling Officer, and he's uh, given consideration to the being carried di distances and storage is in, is in entirely happy with the arrangement. Submitted plans, which actually sh aren't shown on the overheads here, uh, show tracking arrangements for the refuse vehicle, and they all demonstrated that the, um, that the development can be uh, readily serviced by that vehicle. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Bryan. Only because it's been raised on the portfolio order for waste and recycling for the authority, just to mention that because it's been raised. Thank you. Uh, I think we've exhausted questions. Uh, go on to the debate. Who wants to start? Councillor Brown? Then Councillor Barnes. Chair, I, I'd like to start at saying I'm thoroughly disappointed that the ward member, whose excuse for not being here is bizarre, I have to say, and the parish council, who's a number of members, I think Councillor Kendall is a member of Walsbourne Parish Council, and he probably could uh, tell us why there's none attendance from the parish council tonight if he's minded, and it's not too embarrassing. Well, it's, you're not embarrassing me. I have no idea why nobody else could come. We have a standing arrangement that because I sit on this committee, I don't get asked to come along, but I don't know. Sorry. All the points have been raised are either covered in the report or the consultees don't have any objection. So we can't question any speakers because they're not here. So I'm mindful to recommend that we go with the officer's recommendation. I will propose that. Councillor Barnes. <coughs> yes, uh, I asked the applicant the questions really that were in the report from the parish and the ward members. They weren't here. As far as I was concerned, she seemed to know what she was talking about. She gave proper answers, uh, and I'm quite satisfied. Although I, uh, looking at it originally, I wasn't, but I'm quite satisfied now. Quite happy to second the recommendation. Much, Councillor Barnes? Yeah, I'll, you beat me to it. I was going to ask the questions, but you beat me to it. So thank you for asking the, the agent the questions. So we've had a proposal, a second. Does anybody else want to speak in the debate? No. Um, obviously, we've got the revised recommendation in the update sheet. So you're happy with, with that one, Councillor Brown? So, um, well, we'll go to the vote. All those in favour of granting the application, as per the officer's report? Five, Chair. Against? One, Chair. Committee approved, uh, <coughs> excuse me, committee approved, resolves, resolves even, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, to grant application 18 slash 00997, FUL. Thank you very much, Anthony. Chair, yes. the point I raised about the um, rooms being wide or the door gate doorways in the bungalows, is that going to be taken into account? Well, 
Yeah, we'll put a note out. Right, we'll move next to the next item on the agenda, which is 19 0005 AUT Green End Farm Willington, outline plan the application for two detached dwellings <coughs> and garages with the use of existing <laughs> access. Sorry. And I'll uh, pass on to Anthony before I choke again. Thank you, Chair. Um, the application is in outline for two dwellings in the settlement known as Willington, and you can see it on the Land Ranger map there, south east of uh, Shipston on Stour with the black dot. Red, the red edge, as you can see, it's uh, to the uh, east of this small settlement in a, a paddock area. Uh, a bit of a wider view there, it's just repeating the information. And here we have a, an illustrative layout as to how two houses would be accommodated on the site. And X marks the spot here in terms of the uh, site on the uh, aerial photograph. It also serves to illustrate members the key issue uh, in this application which is um, where is the physical confines, where, where does, do officers consider that to be? And uh, having considered the, uh, the guidance note that we've been using for many years, which is uh, connect in connection with the former local plan, we continue to use that guidance. And uh, I think this aerial photograph clearly shows that uh, the site is outside of that confine. There are no, there are no uh, enclosing buildings to the northeast or south that might, might suggest otherwise. And some shots um, with a map extract just to show you with the blue arrow as to where they, 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 they were taken from. Looking across the site. So it's open land. Again. I, this was included uh, because a point was uh, made uh, that the... That the argument was put that it's potentially in a sustainable location because of its proximity to Shipston on Stour. And the argument was put that uh, people can access Shipston on Stour across the fields. Uh, but office, officers consider this is insufficient as a means of access. Uh, it's not paved, it's not lit, um, and uh, it really is an outlying settlement that uh, is considered not to be sustainable and therefore not appropriate for further residential development in this form. The recommendation of uh, members is to refuse. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, sorry, Chair, just to add oh. that there is uh, uh, information on the update sheet which uh, members may have digested. Thank you. You were trying to catch me out there, weren't you, Anthony? Right, um, if we could have our first speaker, Pete please, which is Mrs. Bygate and Julia Day. Yep. If you could uh, introduce yourself, ladies, and let me know um, how you're splitting up the three minutes or is one person speaking the other for, for questions. If you could just let, me know, let us know, please. Hello, I'm Julia Day. I'm the agent. I have, I'm not here to speak just in the capacity of support and to answer questions at the end if need be. But Mrs. Bygate will be using all the three minutes. Brilliant. That's great. Thank you. Can I just say before we start that I do wear hearing aids and they're not compatible with your loop, so just bear with me if I can't hear you. Okay, just, just indicate if you can't hear us or just yeah. wave or, or whatever. <laughs> okay, will do. Thank you. Barrow, you've got three minutes. Okay, so uh, my name's Sharon Bygate and I'm the applicant. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to discuss my application in more detail. I started this process about a year ago as um, I simply can't afford to live in my current home, which is Green and Farm, for much longer. My husband passed away four years ago and um, I'm left with three young children to bring up in a house that's deteriorating and um, so 
on looking around at properties, it quickly became apparent that this was going to be tough for not only my children moving there from their childhood home, but also for me leaving my friends and community in Willington, which I've lived in for 19 years. So I thought a good option would be to stay in the village and apply for planning on my garden land, which is immediately to the east of my existing home. And although it's called Green End Farm, it's not actually been farmed on for um, at least 40 years. So my children and I love living in the village. We've got strong links here. My husband was deeply passionate about everything that went on in the village. He was chair of the parish council for about 10 years. So it does matter to me and my children what happens here. My children's school bus comes down my driveway. My neighbours have been really supportive since my husband died. I'd hate to lose this support. These plans are purely for illustrative purposes and are completely flexible. I'm seeking outline planning here and would be more than happy to discuss the size, design, appearance of the houses at a later stage, subject to council's requirements. I'm proposing one of the houses as a self-build for my family and I, and if there's interest, the second house could be also be a self-build. Building one or two, two houses here would not encroach into open countryside, as suggested. It's also been suggested the site would be unsustainable because Willington is not listed as a Category 1 to 4 settlement in the core strategy, but it is within easy reach of Shipston. It's about a mile and a half away, not much further away from the town centre than the houses built recently on the Camden Road. We walk or cycle to Shipston nearly every Sunday to visit my parents. We go across the fields and we go on the road into Shipston. It's about 20 minutes walking and obviously quicker if you're cycling. I've lived in Shipston until I was 23 and never strayed far from there. Uh, my parents live in Shipston and my father's just recently diagnosed with dementia, so I go there all the time to look after him and help them in extremely challenging and difficult situations. Um, and staying close would enable me to keep looking after them and provide them with the support that they don't get from local services. I use Shipston on a daily basis. It forms part of my life, a food shop. 30 seconds. Doctors, dentists, opticians, and my children play rugby there. The proposed houses will be built to the highest environmental standards, including electrical, electric vehicle charging points, renewable energy technologies such as solar panels. That's really important to me and my children. As my husband used to run a business that sold many of these products, I know the importance of using them, and I can't see how two houses here would, would be against the national aims of carbon reduction. Sustainability involves economic, environmental, and social aspects. As I propose to Can I ask you to wrap up now, come to the end of this sentence? Yeah, I can ensure using local businesses to carry out the work. Thank you. I didn't want to uh, put you off too much. Right, any questions? Councillor Fielding. Um, couple. You, you say you've got two children. What sort of age are they? Three, three counts of the field, not two. Three, sorry. Sorry, three children. So my youngest is 12, um, my next one's 15, and the next one's 16. Uh, and they go to the local school in? They're at Bloxham School. In Bloxham? Yes. Fair enough. And the other one is, are you considering these properties to be local needs? Definitely, yeah, definitely. I think Although it's not in the paperwork, I didn't know, or maybe I misread it. So they would be local needs properties. Yeah. They're not. I think they are. Uh, I think Councillor Fielding would have been would have mentioned in the papers that it was that it's not. It's they are open market properties. But again, just to confirm that with the officer uh, when we have our technical questions. But I think they are open market properties. Right, Councillor Barnes, you've indicated. Uh, well, yes, it was sort of. Mark, we'll we'll come back to you on that one. Uh, uh, obviously, the officer says it's in an unsustainable position. Now you're saying is, is there a river the, the map that we have on at the moment is there a river across between that and the main road or, or a footpath or So there's, there's two footpaths into Shipston. We actually go do go across the river and uh, it takes you into the old London road into Shipston which is the quickest route or you can go down a footpath down another route, no river and that's uh, 20, 20 minutes yeah. And if we were to approve the houses as, as was said, there isn't a local need, but they would be in your name. Yes. Yeah. Do you want to come in and clarify that, Mesa, please? Well, the simple chair, that they are open market properties or, or dwellings. There's no restriction being placed on them at all. Would you like to make a comment on that, or on this occasion that you... 
Thank you, if I may. Yes, the, the, the application has been de deliberately described as at least one self-built property. That's for Sharon. Um, and, and it is clear that there is a local need in terms of the needs of the district to provide self-build units. And there's also a national requirement for self-build units. Right, thank you very much. Right, any further questions? We'll, we'll clarify that a bit later. We'll clarify all that, yeah, I did say we'll clarify all that with the officer as well. Uh, the proper definitions, etc. just so we're under no illusion of what we're, we're talking about on this application. Uh, you're free to go now, ladies. Thank you very much. And <coughs> can we have our ward member, please? Councillor O'Donnell. Obviously, you've got five minutes whenever you're ready, Councillor O'Donnell. Good evening, committee. There are three key areas which drove me to bring this before you. The long-term impact of non-sustainability judgments upon other rural settlements, such as Willington, the interpretation of the NPPF and our own core strategy, particularly CS15, CS16 and AS10, I believe these policies allow self-build in rural areas, which is proposed here. And finally, our approach to self-build targets at Stratford District Council. The Bygates are woven into the very fabric of Wollington. Mrs. Bygate is not a speculative landowner looking to make a quick buck. The plot is currently part of the Bygates garden. Of note, immediately to the north is a recent six-house development, no more sustainable than this application in terms of distance from Shipston. The argument on unsustainability was made throughout the officer's report, but that seems to only consider the location of this site, ignoring other aspects of sustainable development, such as social and economic matters. As a forward-looking committee, I would ask you to view sustainability with an eye to the future. The CLA recently found that many villages across the UK are overlooked by local planning process as they are judged unsustainable due to lack of public services. As a result, unsustainable villages are not allocated housing and have severely limited development options to improve their sustainability. Surely this is outdated. It is vital that we consider this social capital, the network of relationships among people who work and live in a particular society, enabling that society to function effectively. Sustain sustainable development is about action, not just maintaining the status quo. We should be asking what do we want our communities to look like in 20 years' time and how do we achieve that. NPPF paragraph 78 supports rural development and says, where there are groups of smaller settlements, development in one village may support services in a village nearby, and Mrs. Bygate has illustrated how they utilise many of Shipston's facilities regularly. The site is within Willington and in all other settlements category CS15. This does not make it unsuitable for development. While such a category is at the bottom of the hierarchy of development area types, it is advised in CS16 that 750 homes will be built in such other rural settlements across the district. This application would reduce that target. AS10 wording supports community small-scale schemes for housing, employment or community facilities to meet a need identified by a local community in a parish plan, neighbourhood plan or other form of local evidence on land within or adjacent to a village. As far as I can see, this is a small-scale housing scheme which will benefit the community by providing self-built housing and allow this family to stay within the village. There are no technical objections from highways, ecology or environmental health. In addition, I refer you to the planning appeals finding we Admington, which I understand has already been forwarded to you. Just as with Willington, Admington is an other rural settlement site. The inspector also noted CS um, 16, 750 homes target in such settlements. He made observations in respect of the appeal site not having convenient access to services and facilities other than by a private car, observing this is not a requirement under CS 15 and AS 10. 
The inspector noted that the benefit of housing in such areas, including the proposed development, is the contribution they can make to the vitality of these rural communities. Indeed, our own CS15, we note, the principle of sustainability relates to a wide range of factors, environmental, economic and social, and not just to the limited issues such as the need to travel. To the Council, it is important to ensure that communities of all types can be sustained into the future, preferably as a result of gradual and organic growth. Moving on to self-build. I was interested to learn that there are currently 111 people on the self-build register. 18 of these are looking for um, the ship scenario specifically, and 13 are not site-specific. Therefore, potentially 40 people could be looking at this self-build opportunity and reduce the number on that register in a sustainable location and not encroach on open countryside. Our core strategy explanation for CS16 housing development says there are a number of mechanisms that can contribute to meeting the housing needs of the district and the council supports the principle of schemes being delivered as self-build projects. Finally, the government indicates that it believes self-build can play an important role in delivering high quality housing that meets the needs of all sections of the community. Councils have a legal duty to give suitable development permission to enough suitable service plots of land to meet the demand for self-build and custom house building in their area. Granting planning permission would certainly help with this duty. I believe this to be a unique case, and I look forward to hearing your thoughts. Thank you. Spot on. Um, right, questions for the Warden Member. Councillor Brown. Yeah, firstly, Chairman, I have to declare that I'm the Ward Member for Abington. I was involved with that planning application, but I'm here with a hope of mind on this agenda item. Okay. Um, probably Councillor won't be able to answer my question, and I apologise. I should have asked Mrs. Bygate the question. I presume the South Build is for herself. I think we heard that it was. Does that mean that the house she's living in will be open market once she moves into the South Build? I presume it would be, but I would need to double check that for you. Because the reason they're looking to move is because they financially cannot maintain the house they're in. So that's why. I think um, the applicant and the agent did not, uh, their confirmation that it would be open market if they were to vacate it. Right. Uh, anybody else? Because I've got a question if nobody else has one. Um, right. I can't think what it was now because you put me off. Um, very briefly, um, yeah, it's to do with local. Um, we've we've had you support in it. Obviously, there's been no comment from the parish council. Um, there's been one item, uh, one letter of support in the report, one of no objection, and four objections to the application. Um, Usually, when there is a strong local need, there seems to be more support, uh, more letters of support. The parish council writes and all actually attends. I just wondered why this is not the case in this application. It's my understanding it's a parish meeting, and they held a specific parish meeting about the application. And Mrs. Bygate answered any concerns they had and engaged fully with them, and spoke with them. Um, and nobody really had any major objections. So it was felt that I think they felt as they weren't objecting, that was all they had to do. I, d I don't believe they're an overly active parish meeting, to be honest. I think twice a year. Yeah, I would say if sometimes it it's probably would have been better if, if they did support it to send in a, a letter of support or actually attend or, or get somebody to attend the meeting. It would have set down a stronger signal to, to the committee, in my opinion. Councillor Saito, I can see you're itching to come in on this one. <clears throat> I might be speaking out of turn, Chairman. Don't worry, I'm used to that. So, <laughs> but uh, effectively, Barchester and Willington doesn't have a parish council. It's one of those very small villages that has a parish meeting. Um, and I was their county councillor for 16 years, so I'm very familiar with how that parish works. And indeed, when it was under Mrs. Bygate's husband's care and uh, and everything else that he put into it, when he was a very active person there. Um, so, but, but, but basically, they don't meet that regularly. They have to convene special meetings, as Penny Anna suggested, to look at planning issues. Um, and, and therefore, I think we can take that point that the ward member mentions as being quite, uh, 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 being quite realistic. Yeah, I'm saying it might be a good idea when the ward member goes back, if she does speak to them, that not uh, tacit approval, uh, 
has less weight than a written support of the application. Um, I know that they, they've done me very ready, but they did say they had a special meeting for this. So, again, was there any minutes of that meeting, etc.? And, and it would have been ideal if we'd had something formal, a formal notification of a report, in my opinion. Well, they have a long standing uh, parish secretary who I would have thought would have been on top of that. Councillor Barnes. Uh, sorry, Councillor Brown, then Councillor. Yeah, just on that matter. <laughs> Just on that matter, it's misleading, uh, page 27, it says Barchester and Willington Parish Council. I find that misleading. Yeah. Okay. We'll make a note of that as well. Yeah. Any further questions for the ward member? Right, Councillor Donnell, you're free to go, thank you. And we'll now move on to questions for the officer. Councillor Barnes. It was just clarification on need or open market or whatever, if the self build are usually for people, specific people, aren't they? My sort come in first and come in on to me. I'll try and clarify it. So uh, basically they would start as uh, an open market dwelling liable to the full sil the sil charge. Then they have to go through a four step criteria to apply for a self build exemption. And they have to go through the, the self building um, the criteria. If they go through that, that, that four steps, then the council could consider that this, this is a self build property. Now, one of those criteria is actually living in the properties as your principal residence for three years. Now, if they manage to do that, fine. And with all the other criteria, they wouldn't pay any silver charge. But when they come to sell that property after three years, it would still be an open market property but not liable to a further yes. civil charge. Thank you for that, Clara. Yeah. Did you indicate? No? Oh, not on this occasion. Thanks for fielding. Just going back onto that point, um, you can't then turn it into a local needs <coughs> situation. But they haven't asked for a local needs property. They haven't asked for a local needs property. They've asked for self-build and one open market dwelling. have a, a slight adjournment. Have we clarified something? Yeah, we are clarifying something. Um, obviously, we, we've talked about self-build and local needs. Um, and as far as I can tell, and in discussions with my colleagues on the top here, neither of those categories have been applied for in this application. Well, the self-build has. So, um, it, together. So, we're just getting clarification from Anthony on this. If you could come back. Probably. Tag team, probably. Yeah. 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 You. Um, so, two questions self build or local needs? Um, clearly, the developer is coming forward with a self build scheme um, that isn't, isn't a local needs scheme. Um, now, the, the the, the, the question I think needs to be teased apart, we need to consider it as proposed, which is a, a self-build scheme. It's not complying with the local needs side of our uh, core strategy policy. Um, members may be aware of the emerging site allocations plan, um, which talks about self-build, gives officers and the council more guidance on where this may occur. 
and policy SAP1 says that uh, it may occur within and adjacent to Stratford-upon-Avon, the main rural centres and local service villages. So it doesn't fall within the scope of this emerging policy. This is the only guidance we have at the moment, um, but it strikes me as being good guidance. Um, where, where, where schemes fall outside of that guidance, we have to take it that it's like any other open market housing within the countryside where there's presumption against development. Um, I'd like to remind members of um, the uh, local needs scheme policy and that clearly says that within and adjacent to settlements development may include small scale community led schemes. And then we turn to our development management guidance document and it says that evidence of identification of need should come, of, come from a recent parish housing needs survey or surveys and or technical work prepared as part of any parish plan stroke neighbourhood plan. So it seems very clear to officers that this is an open market scheme um, which doesn't comply with policy and there are no material or compelling material reasons to override the, the, the uh, substantial and driving primary um, consideration of the core strategy. Just, just to pick up on that, if I may, Anthony, um, the position of officers is that the correct decision on this application is refusal. This application is not uh, a, a self-build application. This application is not a local needs application. The correct decision is therefore refusal. If the applicant wants to come forward and make those cases, then they should come forward with an application that does that. It should be evaluated as such, and we should come to you with a fully understood scheme rather than uh, teasing information out as we sit here tonight. As we sit here tonight, this application is, is very clearly contrary to your policies and contrary to your practice on, on uh, d dwellings on the periphery of, of small villages. And that's why officers have come forward to you with a recommendation for refusal. Right, thank you for that. I think that was <coughs> pretty clear. Uh, Councillor Fielding. Would it be possible to defer it for the no. uh, oh, applicant to um, come forward with a revised thing or no. if he wants to prepare you, you can make the proposal councillor fielding but you'll need support in the, from the rest of the committee to, to or the majority of the committee to do that so the reasons to diverge. and the, you know the, the planning reasons for the deferral well, the planning reasons i would have thought is the very argument that's just been put forward between local needs and self-build um it, would it not be possible for that to be sorted out by the applicant councillor ryan Chairman, we have to deal with this application on its merits, what's in front of us tonight. If they want to come back with an application, it would have to be a new application. So uh, I don't think the deferral will get support. Councillor okay, Kendall? Well, I think... Yeah. Uh, just let Councillor Kendall... Kendall. We'll it. I, I think I agree with Councillor Brown. I think he said what I, I was thinking as well. It, I think to ask for a deferral would only muddy the waters. We should deal with this application before us and whatever the applicants want to do is up to them. Are we still in points of clarification or debate? We move from one to the other, I think. Uh, uh, Councillor Saint. Oh, well, we're on to the debate. Um, we are now. We've had a proposal to defer. Have we got a seconder for Councillor Fielding's proposal? Look, um, Going back, if you want to put it this way, I, I don't think that's going to make us any further forward because yeah. they, they, they have learned a lot sitting here. So can I take it, Councillor Barnes, you don't, you're not willing to support Councillor Fielding's proposal? I'll, sec I'll second the vermin. You're second. reason that there appears to be less professional advice that they've been given and the possibility that uh, we c they may be able to move forward if we defer it. Yeah, that's, not, that's not a reason. I, I don't really know. I'm, I'm trying to get to the bottom of it. I'm so not particularly happy with that, but I think we've, we've got a proposal in a second to move this on. We'll go to the vote whether to defer this application or not. So all those in favour 
of agreeing to defer this application, please indicate. Two chairman. And those against? Four chairman. So that proposal falls. So we'll now go back to the debate to... Well, we morphed it from technical questions into the debate. So we'll now officially start the debate, you know, as Churchill would say. Right, Councillor Saint, you can start now, please. <coughs> yes, Chairman. Um, I'd like to take issue with some of the comments that have been made this evening in relation to planning policy. I'm not normally one that wants to go against policy. In fact, I had a fair amount of a big hand in contributing towards the policy that does exist, as everybody in the room knows. Um, but I effectively am happy to support this application on the grounds that the council policy is adequate. Uh, let's forget about all these technicalities over self-build and market housing and what have you. We're talking about a parish which probably has, what, 60 or 70 houses in it. We're proposing to put two more in it, and that will enable Mrs Bygate to keep up her residence within the village itself. To move into a new house instead of having to redevelop an existing one. So presumably whoever buys it will do that. But that's a speculative point which is irrelevant. I was a bit surprised when Mr Young started going on about built-up area boundaries. Built-up area boundaries have been devised for local service villages and it's been well established that Barchester and Willington is not a local service village at all. It comes under the category of other settlements, of which Councillor O'Donnell has correctly pointed out there is a planning policy requirement for 750 houses in such settlements across the entire district. And I would have thought the two here would have matched that. Perhaps they might even need four or five in Barchester to actually match their fair share of that allocation. So that's one policy position that really does support this application. The fact that we need a certain amount, you can't let villages stagnate, you have to have an opportunity. Um, and I'm well aware, I'm, I'm prepared to take on trust. We never know what's going to happen in the future. That effectively, if these houses are granted and built, that Mrs Bygate will move into one of them and she will remain part of the village. I think I know the people there well enough to accept that that is a, a, a simple fact of life. Now then... Let's have a look at the position. This particular site is not a particularly uh, uh, attractive site. Um, it, it's bounded by the main road and a field, and therefore you can't argue that there's anything on the outside that might give it some likelihood of uh, matching up. So the vernacular style of the village is, is well away from here, as you can see from there. And you've got oddments of buildings of all their own individual character dotted about all over the place between the road that goes round this site and the river that Mrs Bygate refers to that they can walk down to and cross. Presumably there's a bridge down there somewhere, um, you know, and uh, they can get across to walk into Shipston. Um, it's very, very, very close indeed. So much so that the Shipston neighbourhood plan got held up with a big argument about a bit of land that was on their side of the river but was actually in Barchester and Wellington Parish. And uh, there was a, a hell of a kerfuffle and a hell of a difficulty over sorting that one out. But that's been resolved. And I think this can be resolved by us saying that there is a policy requirement for a certain proportion of these houses, so we can't just turn around and say, no, policy says you don't build in a village like this. Policy doesn't say that at all, in my view. Um, I mean, there might be people that want to disagree with me, but that is my view. And uh, the entrance to this particular site is, uh, is, is through an area that's not very attractive and I think the houses effectively will improve the general layout and appearance 
of that end of the village. So I would like to propose that we grant this application. I expect the officers will want to sort out conditions with us to support me, but I'm happy in the usual way for them to take a lead on this. Mr Fielding. Um, Can you put your microphone on, please? Councillor yeah. Sainter said, um, CS 15, let's get the right number, 15, um, local needs schemes um, are encouraged within the villages, and CS, uh, AS 10. Councillor Fielden, we've already, we've already established it's been not identified as a local needs scheme. Yeah, no, but I'm just so trying can to, you to, just to clarify, to point them, going in support of what Councillor Saint said. Yeah. Um, AS10, it's small scale within the community, and also the fact that um, other terms within CS10 do give um, under B, 10B residential or otherwise within the physical confines in accordance with 15. And in my book, as a, um, the, the road does enclose the area both on three sides, um, and I can't see why this sh development should not go forward. And I prepare to second Councillor Saints if that if this is a, a proposal. I, I must admit, I, I'm concerned that we're still confused about this. There are too many uncertainties on my on this. You know, is it local need? Is it uh, South Build? Is it market open market? And as Councillor Williams, who used to be on this committee, used to say, if something's not quite right, it's wrong. And I think this this is not quite right. And we talk about all of the settlements, and if you look in the policy, it says development is restricted to small-scale community-led schemes which meet a scheme identified by the local community. And in my opinion, I don't think it does. But it's up to the committee to decide on this one. We've had a proposer and a seconder to grant this application. Councillor Brown, before... Chairman, I think we all have some sympathy towards this application, but the application we've got before us is the wrong application. It is clearly against policy. Uh, I'm not going to go into the argument with Councillor Saint, but their core strategy is clear. It's against policy. It's the wrong application we've got before us, and I think it should be refused and ask the applicant to come back with another application. Okay, well, we'll go on. We need some conditions of uh, the law yeah. towards grant. Yeah. Uh, should we do? Right, we've had a proposal and a seconder to go against the officer's recommendation. And, and Chair, can we just clarify the reasons to actually uh, go against the officer's re recommendation yeah. as well, please? Um, and I've been asked to clarify the reasons of going against the planning officer's um, recommendation. Fifteen refers to small-scale development. Okay, I, I, it is not a, as such a community in the form that there is a parish council there. But uh, I'm sorry, councillor, can you can you help me? Which part of CS15 are you thinking of? Um, I can indeed, sir. C, uh, G, sorry. Within the adjacent to a settlement development that may include small case community led schemes. I know it's not community led, but it is somebody who lives in the community who is leading it. I, I think you've just contradicted no it. I must admit, I think, you've just, I think you just contradicted yourself there, Councillor Field. Um, but I, also, I, we, we'll go to the vote now. I think we've had a proposal in the seconder, so we'll, we'll go to the vote. All those in conditions. Um, well, Chairman, can we can we take it as read that this is an outline application? Yeah. So there'll be. The, the, the standard reserve matters condition, the standard time scales. Um, is there anything else that members would want? Well, we've got a list of suggested conditions. Oh, well done. So there's, there's the three-year time limit condition, approved plans, uh, maximum of two dwellings, details, layout, scale, appearance, access, and landscaping to be submitted and approved, a construction management plan, foul and surface water disposal, Access parking and manoeuvring areas to be completed prior to first occupation. 
land contamination assessment and remediation where necessary, remediation to be completed as approved, wheelie bins and cabling for EV charging points. Gentlemen, are you happy to accept those conditions? I'm, I'm, I'm happy to accept those, Chairman, yeah. So we've had a proposal and a seconder to grant the application in, with the conditions proposed by Mr Young there. So all those in favour? Three, Chairman. All those against? Three, Chairman. And my cast and vote goes with the against the recommendation, uh, against the proposals to refuse. Uh, to, sorry, against the proposal to grant. So we now need to go back to the refusal. Chair, that's the refusal. So I need uh, anybody out of the three of us. Uh, okay, I will make the proposal that we go with the officer's recommendation to refuse the application. Seconded by Councillor Barnes. A brain, brain. Sorry, Councillor Brain. Anyway, so all those in favour? Three chairmen. Three. Against? Two chairmen. And abstentions? One chairman. Committee resolves to refuse application 190005 AUT. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to have a gentleman, if you all bear with us, we're going to have a two minute adjournment uh, due to some issue that's just arisen. So. And if you want to go, Councillor Brian. Thank you.
Right, sorry for that, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you for bearing with us. Um, a slight issue uh, happened on this application, uh, which is 18 slash 03215 slash vary. Uh, before we go to this application, um, the District Council went through the, its normal processes and we've, we've met our obligations. Um, but the applicant uh, wanted to speak and made representations about this application. Um, and we actually felt we went through the right processes to go ahead with this application. Uh, and if we did, the applicant wouldn't be able to speak on this matter. Um, because there was some confusion. And, uh, we feel the only way the applicant can speak on this application is to defer the item to the next agenda. Um, and that's what I'm asking for the committee to agree to. On the next item then? We're, we're seeking approval from the committee to defer this item so the applicant can then make his representations. If we didn't do it any other way, the applicant would not be able to speak on this application. Defer it to the next time, then. If it's your judgment, Chairman, that that's the appropriate thing to do. I'm happy to support you. Yeah, is that the proposal, Chair? Yeah, so... I'll proposal from Council of Arms, seconded by Councillor Kettle. All those in favour for deferral? Five, Chairman. Against? No, none against? If abstentions? No, we all agreed on that one. I oh, one abstention. Yes. yes. We just, just sit it on the um, on the microphone. Yep. We have. It is a matter of public record, so sit on the microphone. Um, but. I, it seems a regular to me I do believe. No, would that come forward? Dale can correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe there was some paperwork about the applicant speaking at at some time in the past, or his firm being notified that the um, matter would come before committee. Uh, unfortunately, the speaker really sh basically should have made sure that the actual matter was at committee on this certain date and registered. But he did express an interest at some time previously to actually be notified. It's not the District Council's job to actually notify uh, a, an objector or a speaker. Uh, and therefore, uh, because of the confusion that they requested to speak, they didn't exactly, well, they didn't register appropriately, appropriately like they should have done, then we've actually assessed that the best matter, a way of resolving this, is for it to be deferred so both sides can actually speak next time in three weeks. In a sense of fairness. Um, yes, uh, and we, um, we appreciate that, sir. So, uh, thank you. Um, but there are occasions, for other reasons as well, an item gets deferred halfway through the. So, yeah. So we, we can only apologise and, and thank you for bearing with us. And we note, we note your objection as well. Yes, thank you. Right, so committee resolves to defer application 18 slash 03215 slash very. Thank you. Right, we'll now move on to our application. Number item 7 on the agenda, which is 18 slash. 03136 FUL, Allington House, One Farm Close Harbury, full application for a new dwelling and access. And our presenting officer is Alison Lewis. Thank you, Alison.
Thank you, Mr Chairman. The application site is situated in Harbury, as shown by the black dot. The application involves the development of a character two-bed house on a plot of land on Farm Street in the conservation area. There are two listed buildings slightly further along Farm Street, number 27, and stone walls on the opposite side of the road. Here's an aerial view showing the location of the application site in Harbury, noted by the red marker. The application site fronts onto Farm Street. The private access road, the private access to Farm Close is on the north side of the plot. This is a de development of four detached houses built approximately 20 years ago. To the east is Allington House, which is separated from the application site by an existing double garage and outbuilding. There is another cottage built to the south of the site, number 30, 35 Farm Street. The plot is partially screened from the street by trees and the low brick wall. The site is currently surplus garden area, the Allington House retaining separate garden to the south, shown by the blue line. This slide shows plans and elevations for the new house, designed to complement the local vernacular. Two bedrooms, modest size footprint, 56 square metres, 6.6 metres to the ridge. The main part of the building is built with uh, red brick, single storey section and porch made of natural stone. The roof would be finished with reclaimed plain clay tiles. This slide shows the proposed layout of the site with a garden to the rear set back from the pavement with a small front garden which will be planted with shrubs. It's set further back from the pavement than the next door house, an older house, as per the village design statement requirements. That's here. There are two parking spaces for the two bed cottage accessed off farm close. Some of the sycamores boundary wall and the grassed area is to be retained to soften the view to the north in this area. Allington House is on the right hand side of the screen here. It's separated by a double garage and an outbuilding here. There's adequate off-road parking retained for Allington House. That's here. There are currently seven trees along the west boundary of the site, six sycamore and one rowan. The Arborough Cultural Report assesses them as Class C only. The, report, the, the proposed design requires the removal of four of the trees, whilst the, 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 main, the remaining, um, <clears throat> whilst three of them will, will remain in this area here. This slide shows the application site with Farm Road to the left of the picture behind these trees. This slide shows the trees along the front of the plot. plot. This is taken from Farm Road, sorry, Farm Street. The group further away would be retained. So these would be retained, these would be removed. So they're self sown sycamore. This slide shows Allington House and the existing double garage and double parking space that would be re retained. This slide shows the rear garden of Allington House, which would be retained. This slide shows the view looking north along Farm Street. The application site is behind the trees. Mr Chairman, that's the end of um, my presentation. There are three updates, Mr Chairman, as detailed on the update sheet, and the recommendation is to approve the application for the reasons detailed in the report subject to the updates. Thank you. Thank you, Alison. Can we have our first speaker, which is Councillor Tim Lockley from Harbury Parish Council. Where is it down? Good evening, Mr Lockley. Thank you for bearing with us tonight. Uh, you've got three minutes. Yeah. 
presentations there, because that speeded things up quite considerably. Um, can I have my slides up? We're working on it, please. Were you want a warning within 30 seconds of your time? Why not? Good Hopefully I you. won't yes. need it. There you go. Okay, thank you. Uh, the first thing to talk about is the numbers game. Um, it's interesting that you put so much emphasis on policy in one of the previous applications. Stratford has a clear policy in its core strategy about local service villages like Harbury. Uh, we're supposed to take about 450 houses over the core strategy period. Um, well, officers have, been, have granted in total more than 800 houses in the local service category one villages like Harbury already, and there are still 12 years of the core strategy left. So uh, um, these things aren't necessarily uh, being observed all the time, and I think that's a real worry, but this is maybe a, a conversation for another time. The second thing to say is that uh, I really don't think the people in Harbury want this development. Uh, and why do I say that? Is well, we just went through a, an extensive neighbourhood development plan process, took four years, extensive consultation with the people. Uh, they designed the policies, and policy number one uh, stresses a number of things which this uh, if this application is granted, it would violate, uh, including um, the policy about uh, developing garden land, the impact on the conservation area. As you can see, in pink is Harbour's conservation area, um, and this lies a right slap bang in the middle of it. Um, and I don't see any way in which this would enhance our conservation area. In fact, it will damage it, because there's no way that this house could blend into the existing conservation area, because a lot of those uh, current houses are built with Harbour stone, and you can't get Harbour stone anymore. The quarry is closed and has been closed for decades. So I don't see it being able to match in and it contravenes um, Harbury Naples Development Plan H1. Uh, and then could you put ne the next slide up please? And then I think we should maybe play, you know, what, spot the difference. Um, this is a, uh, a slide showing the two applications for this house. One of them is the house, the, is the application we're currently considering. The other one is uh, one that was refused by Stratford's officers uh, two years ago. I think you'd be hard pushed to tell the difference. Um, and in fact, the, the planning officer who considered it two years ago found that it contravened numerous of Stratford's own policies, including AS10, CS15, CS16. Um, a, by the way, AS10 and CS15 are about uh, the site is not suitable, and I don't see how any kind of change has happened uh, with that. And it also contravenes uh, policies section uh, CS8, CS9, and CS15 about the status of the conservation area, uh, and it would do an unjustified harm to the setting of listed buildings. This entire site was of course within the historic curtilage of a listed building which is uh, just next door. Um, it would also uh, have a damaging effect on residential amenity. So those are the, the arguments that the Harbury Parish Council seconds. would put forward. Thank you. No, you couldn't. No, Sorry. No. No. Brilliant. So, well in time. So have we any questions for Councillor Lockley? Councillor Lock. Good evening. Um, th there was a two bedroom cottage refused two years ago. Is this on the same plot? Yeah. So the one, th that, that slide you're looking at, the one on the left was refused two years ago. The one on the right is the one you're considering tonight. Oh, right. Oh, thank you. Thank That's you. why I put them t the two together, so you could see that there was, uh, well, almost no difference between these two. Okay. The one on the right, on the left, sorry, that doesn't appear to have, or... The, the trees and the um, landscaping that the one on the right does. Is that correct? Well, I can see a great big tree on both applications. Um, uh, Are we uh, point of clarification with the officer? Okay. Okay. So, look, um, I, I've got a small question. Um, yeah. I know Harbury quite well. I've played football against Harbury. And, yeah, right. Um, been Did one of the two hostlers. Uh, drinking lemonade, of course. Yeah. Um, can you just remind me of some of the houses nearby, like the age, the, the, the stone, the brick, etc. Um, the ones nearby. Just yeah. So the, so the listed building, which is immediately to the north, which is number 27, is built of Harbury stone. The one opposite stone walls is also built of Harbury stone. Um, Harbury stone uh, came from the Harbury quarry, which is now uh, fishing lakes because the quarry has been quarried out and there's no, no means of getting that stone. The house to the south, which I think is there's a picture of, is uh, vernacular brick with Harbury stone at the bottom. Um, and it's a particular type of limestone that looks different from any other limestone and numerous planning applications in recent years have tried to match Harbury stone and they all fail uh, quite spectacularly and they always look jarringly different from Harbury stone. Um, That's great. Thank you very much.
I think you've, you've re told the story well there, so thank you. That was very thank clear. you. Any further questions? Thank you very much, sir. You're free you. to go. And have we got Adrian Lewis here, please? Thank you very much. Okay. Just clarify, how do I get the slides moved on? We're working on it. Yeah, we'll, once they're ready, you'll have three minutes from there. Yep, okay. And again, we'll, we'll give you a shout with 30 seconds to go. How do I, how do I change how, how do I get the slides changed? Just, just nod shout. them, just okay. shout. Yep. And okay. we'll give you a little bit extra time for, for a delay. Okay. Right, happy to start. Okay, so I'm Adrian Lewis. I'm representing the 22 objectors to this planning application, many of whom are here tonight. Next slide. In 1996, this planning authority granted permission for the construction of four large dwellings on land off Farm Street. This subsequently became Farm Close. To protect the conservation area, permission was granted with conditions. Condition 8 of which ensured appropriate landscaping of the open spaces and the maintenance of these. It was a controversial application with over 40 objectors, but an acceptable layout was agreed, and key to this was the setting of the houses far back from Farm Street with the inclusion of a substantial landscape screen. Next slide. You can see here that the landscape screen is the proposed development site. Over the years, the applicant has made a number of successful planning applications for tree works on the landscape screen to let more light into the garden and office. The latter reason is quite ironic because if the development proceeds, the office windows will be filled in in order to comply with planning regulations. Given the landscaping obligations placed by the planning authority, I am uncertain why permission for these tree works was granted. However, the planning officer is suggesting that because of these works, the screen is now less effective. Next slide. These two photographs were taken this week, and I believe show that, despite the inappropriate tree works, the screen remains effective. It is worth bearing in mind that it is still winter. In full leaf, it is even more effective. Next slide. The planning officer is also suggesting that the construction of the proposed dwelling may be a more effective screen than this. I don't see this and wonder how anyone can justify screening a house with a house. Next slide. These are the front cover of the design and access statements submitted by the applicant's developer. Note a previous application in 2016 was refused. I leave you to consider if such a dwelling provides more effective and appropriate screening in the conservation area than this. Next slide. It is worth being aware that Farm Close is a shared access private road with maintenance responsibility split equally between the four properties. As such, it is unclear if the restrictive covenants allow for any one party to make unilateral changes to the road access. If this precluded, access for this development would need to come off Farm Street. In summary, we believe that the proposed dwelling would adversely impact the conservation area and the settings of the two listed buildings. This is why this land was effectively sterilised from development by the Planning Authority in 1996 and used to form an effective landscape screen from the Farm Close development. And why in 2017 your Planning Officer refused a similar application. I'd also like to point out that the eight building referenced in the previous planning officer slide is actually a habitable space. You can check with the planning application. It was approved for residential use. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Spot on. Well done. Okay. Thank you. Questions for Mr. Lewis? No, the only thing is um, obviously the, the sycamores are in full, with the one that's up there, the mm -hmm. sycamores are in full. Full leaf, yes. whatever the terminology is. Sorry, I'm, uh -huh. yes. I'm not a tree man, I'm yes. afraid. Um, we've, we looked at the, I think in the report it says the trees are grade C, um, as in terms of uh, type of specimen. And well, yeah. well, well my, my, my view is, is those, the conditions that were put in place to allow the farm close development, those trees. Uh, they needed to be to, to be maintained. So why have they been allowed to be overgrown with ivy? So you know, I, I would say what you should be recommending is that the landscape is uh, landscape screen is preserved. Action is taken to uh, clean them up and let the crowns develop as they should do. Thank you, and I think the point about access, I think that's a civil matter. I don't think it's in our remit here. No, no, absolutely not. But I just I wanted to make aware. Yeah, no, I'm just making sure there's no. 
the other residents are seeking legal guidance as to whether it's allowed or not. Yeah, brilliant. Any more questions for Mr Lewis? Thank you much, sir. You're free to go. Okay, thank you. And our next speaker, please, is Mrs Jacqueline Johnson. You've got six, uh, six minutes, Mrs Johnson. Yeah. Um, and we'll give again, we'll give you a warning with 30 seconds to go. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, hello, thank you for allowing me to speak this evening. Um, I'm Jacqueline Johnson and I am the applicant. So why do I want to build this cottage? I recently lost my husband and at the same time my daughter left for university. I find myself rattling around a large five bedroomed house which should have a family living in it and not just me. When I looked around Harbury for suitable small detached dwellings in the heart of the village, I quickly realised that there are none. This highlighted a real need for small two bed properties for downsizers to move into whilst remaining in the heart of the village and freeing up larger homes for families. It seemed wrong for me to have this redundant, unused land just sitting there doing nothing when it has the potential to benefit the community. The land was actually conveyed to us by the builder. It stands separately from and is not the garden to Allington House, which has its own large back garden, a substantial front garden, a double garage, plus additional parking for up to three cars. There's also ample room for overflow parking on Farm Close itself, while still allowing for vehicle access. Therefore, this build will take absolutely nothing away from the existing houses on Farm Close or Farm Street. Since the previous application, the plans have been modified to accommodate neighbours' concerns and adhere to the neighbourhood development plan. Furthermore, the proposed cottage will enhance the conservation area for example, the sensitive design and scale of the proposed cottage will reinforce the street scene and complement the two listed buildings by adopting some shared features. In fact, stone walls is flanked on both sides by 70s buildings and is actually loca located directly opposite number 27 and not the proposed cottage. The design and materials such as local stone, second-hand brick and reclaimed clay tiles are sympathetic to its surroundings and typical of the historic buildings in Harbury. It will be set back, not just from the road, but also the pavement, the trees and the build line, in a similar relationship to the cottages further down Farm Street. The most prominent trees forming the street scene will remain. They will become healthier due to less crowding and continue to provide wildlife habitat. Additional landscaping will be introduced to the northern boundary. The beach hedge and ivy clad wall will be preserved. It will help reduce pollution as low hedges have been identified as environmentally beneficial in supporting the production of cleaner air. The ivy clad wall was requested to be put there initially, hence the ivy and the trees. Furthermore, the proposed dwelling will not overlook any back garden. It will have its own secluded 52 square metre rear garden. It's worth noting that while some residents on Farm Street have objected, at least 70% have not. And interestingly, the cottage's immediate neighbours, both north and south, have no objection to the build. In addition, this cottage adheres to national planning policy development and design principles by promoting good design which is in keeping with the character of the area. Government guidelines and the national planning policy framework stresses the importance of having a planning system that is genuinely plan-led. It asserts where a proposal accords with a development plan it should be approved without delay. This proposal meets all the planning criteria, including the emerging Harbury neighbourhood plan, as clearly outlined in Alison Willer's um, report. This is an opportunity for this committee to have the legacy of approving a build of a much needed, environmentally sound small cottage. 
which will utilise a redundant sustainable location. Nestled behind the trees and sympathetic towards its surroundings, it will enhance the conservation area, provide a home for downsizers and future generations, and become part of Harbury's heritage. Supported by all of the expert consultees, this cottage reflects the blue blueprint of the Harbury we see today, which grew organically in this way. I therefore respectively ask you to approve my application. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Mr Johnson. Any questions, please? No? No, you obviously answered everybody's question in your speech. Okay. Right, you're free to go. Thank you. Thank you. We move on to points of clarification. Technical questions for the officer? Councillor Harris, I'm not used to having uh, ward members here. Chair. I am. Very I've got you down. Here. You're number four speaker. You're here. Perhaps it was talking to Councillor Lockley about the hostelries in Harbury put me off and I lost the show. So, blame Councillor Lockley. Sorry about that. Uh, sorry. I have no, not. I'm using, your, I'm using your time up, Councillor Barnes. How long have I got, Chair? You've got five minutes. Oh, that's not long enough. Uh, you've still got it five is. minutes. It is. It is. <laughs> uh, Chair, thank you for listening to me and committee members. I support obviously a lot of the things that have said today and whilst I'm sympathetic to the applicant because it is a balancing act in Harbury of um, finding smaller properties and the capacity for downsizing and it is difficult when we go through planning to um, make decisions but that said I have to say I am against this for the simple reasons of, of has already been stated in the policies. I'd like to remind you that this is a garden development that sits within Harbury Conservation Area and that Harbury is an SL, LSV1 village which has already delivered 136 new dwellings and surpassed its core strategy allocation at most 113. We have clear capacity at over six years or if I'm wrong in my figures as the chair of the parish says 12 years of our five year housing land supply. I would ask you to consider the basic tenets of the MPPF um, in, that's, um, in regarding this application. Um, there's none that I've seen that do support it. There's no social, economic or environmental benefit from this application. There's no material employment, no environmental benefit, but a lot of green space within the conservation area. We just have one more house squeezed in adjacent to the road and very immediate neighbour. Um, it does concern me how close this build would be to the adjacent house. I'd ask you also to consider the core strategy which has already been mentioned. The key policies that I've considered and I'm asking you to look at would be CSA, it's historic environment. CS15 distribution of development, CS16 housing development and AS10 the most significant countryside and villages and we've already touched on these and we're discussing others tonight. I'd say that this application sadly is on, in conflict with each of them. CSA at the application is in the Harbour conservation area. We do not even have the benefit of any comment from the conservation officer. I have contacted him and he has written to me today to say he was too busy and whilst I respect the planning manager's experience of such matters we have no specific comment on the conservation area. Why do we have conservation areas and villages such as Harby if we ignore them when the application, application comes in? Conservation areas are there for a purpose and that purpose is not to be and should not be ignored. CS15 and 16, Harbury is an LSV1 village with an allocation of not more than 25% of 450 dwellings for an LSV1 settlement, being 113 new dwellings, yet Harbury has already delivered 136 new dwellings in addition to the LSV1 villages have delivered in total 853 dwellings out of a total of 450. Where is the shortfall and the delivery of housing numbers um, in Harbury or in LSV1 villages that should be looking to 
the other types of villages. If development is needed in rural villages, let us look at those others such as level two, three, and four. Local services villages which have yet to meet their own sorry, those local service villages which have yet to meet their own allocation. Um, why should the LSV1 continue to bear the brunt of unwanted and needed development? This application cannot be considered to be supported by these two policies in this village. Um, and if not, why are we bothering to have these policies? AS10, rural villages can accept further homes in order to maintain the vitality of rural communities. Harby needs no such support. Further, this application will have a material and adverse impact on other occupiers and users of existing properties in the area, contrary to AS10. It will have an impact on the conservation area um, contrary to AS10. This site, while small scale, is con contrary to the recent adopted neighbourhood plan, is not, identified, is not an identified site within that plan and therefore again contrary to AS10. Where is the local support for this site from the community? I haven't really seen any. Um, there's none from the parish council. In conclusion, the MPPF, our own core strategy, the recently adopted Harvey Neighbourhood Plan, do not support this application. I don't even know why it's here today and why we're considering it because it's seconds. against all policies. Just before I finish, I'd like to draw to your attention, there is a difference of opinion on the neighbourhood plan, and it does concern me that Harvey's been put in a difficult position and maybe... Um, and why I say that is I understand after speaking to the portfolio holder today after concerns around the conservation officer not responding that there's a, a disconnect between the legal and policy aspect of neighbourhood planning that Strap District Council has got to revisit Can guidance and advice it gives neighbourhood parishes we'll, to neighbourhood we'll, plans and I think I don't want to see Harvey disadvantaged because Strap yeah, District okay. Council have got it wrong. Thank Harris. you. Right, any questions for the Lord Member? Um, you put the, the first photo, I was trying to ask the same, we keep saying in the conservation area, it is in the conservation area, or, or looking at the map that we had before, it looked as though it was in between two, or yeah, it is in the conservation area. The pink line is the outskirts of it. And the, and the, uh, Council Lockley, uh, please. Sorry. And uh, the lady did say that the neighbours were not opposing it. Um, you need to next week, no, they're not. Yeah. Can you say please? Your microphone, please. So we can hear you. Your microphone? No, I'm sorry. Oh. Yeah, so we can hear your responses. Oh, sorry. Just like Council Vice just. Anyway, I think we've clarified that point eventually. Um, Council, have you got a point? No, because if anybody else hasn't got a point, I've got a couple of questions. Um, one's been touched on, but the first point you were almost finished saying before you I interrupted you, and it wasn't quite clear because you were rushing as well. So, again, I think I'll give you the opportunity to make that point is you were questioning the neighbourhood planning process and the disconnect and the conservation office. Correct. I didn't quite understand what you were saying there, so just clarify what that. What happened I'm not because you is rushed. that I approached the conservation officer to get a view on the conservation aspect of it, for one. It led to further discussions and he did get back to me and I won't repeat it, well I will repeat it again. He told me he was too busy to respond, which I find is inappropriate. I know that um, the current planning officers here today have experience of conservation. That said, it's led to further conversations and I've also encouraged the parish to sit down with the planners to discuss about the neighbourhood plan on the difference of opinion of how that is. And I understand that Darren has had a word with the planner to acknowledge tonight there is a difference of opinion on about the neighbourhood plan. And um, that led to further conversations that Darren is going to look at being doing a piece of work because there's a difference on what advice has come from legal, what has come from policy, and we may be advising 
parishes wrongly. And I don't want to see Harvey disadvantaged. If we've got it wrong, it's Stratford on how they construct their neighbourhood plan. I accept your point, and we don't want to see any parishes disadvantaged who've gone through the neighbourhood planning process. So we'll, we'll take that point on board, and we'll... Uh, We'll see how we can resolve that and make sure the information is, is correct. So your point has been duly noted on that one. Thank you. But yeah, but also I wanted to make it clear about the difference of the opinion on the neighbourhood plan between the parish, myself, and other representatives and the planners. Yeah. Okay. I think, I think we got that point. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Councillor Barnes touched on it, and it's also in the report. And I think it was Mr. Lewis mentioned as well. Obviously, I'll work with figures all day, so I'm a bit of a stato when it comes to this. And I think it says 18 objections, letters of objection, uh, in the third party responses. I think Mr. Lewis mentioned 22 he was representing. Is, he, is that a nod there from Mr. Lewis? Yeah, thank you. And then 10 letters of support from local residents. And I think Mrs. Johnson said two neighbours supported the application. So, obviously. Uh, okay, okay, thank you. Sorry, um, that's, yeah, no, that's fine. Uh, yeah, thank you. I didn't object. Okay, so there is some support for this application, uh, as you've taken into account those two that didn't make an Now, I hear what you're saying. The, the difference is they didn't object. They haven't actively supported. That said, I don't want this to go through because it opens up the floodgates of us being target across our conservation area for small areas of land to be built on and totally change the dynamics of Harbury. I have in the past had words with the uh, conservation officer and he's described it quite well and eloquently, far better words than I can use, and I know what he would say, that this would not be right. Okay, thank you. Any more questions for the ward member? Councillor Kendall. Just one, please, Chairman. Um, Councillor Harris, you were the ward member a couple of years ago, weren't you? Um, you remember the previous application, you've seen this one. I don't want to talk about the previous application because, of course, that's not relevant tonight, but do you think anything has substantially changed? At the moment, no, I don't. Thank you. That's all. I'll want to talk to the officers later as well. Well, uh, again, we'll I'll point to clarification. I think you're free to go, Councillor Harrison. Again, many apologies for missing you out. It wasn't intentional. <laughs> right, we'll move seamlessly on now to points of clarification. All right. Councillor Barnes, then Councillor. Well, uh, my, one of my villages is all virtually conservation area. It's had 140 hours, it's supposed to have 88. I'm led to believe under the core strategy that single dwellings uh, can be allowed and we don't have any support or comments from any conservation architect unless they're building. So am I correct in saying that in, under the core strategy one development can be addressed, can be approved if it's um, designed okay? Chairman, thank you for that question. That, that's certainly one of the points that I was, was hoping to bring up. I don't know whether members can remember seeing this. I'm sorry it's not in colour. Um, it was a slide put up by uh, your policy officer, John Careford, at a training session some time ago. Um, how do I pray see this? It's a slide put up by John Careford at a training session some time ago. It was intended to address the, the, the exact point that you raised, Councillor Barnes, the issue of single dwellings in LSVs. Uh, if you recall back when the core strategy was originally adopted, uh, the view was taken that once an LSV had reached the, the, the number of dwellings that it was anticipated to have for the, the plan period, that that was it, it was full, and we shouldn't al allow any more. Mm -hmm. um, and we made, exactly, we made a number of decisions on that basis, and the original application on this site was one of them, that it was inappropriate to allow more dwellings because the total number for the village in the plan period had already been met. And we've been told very, very clearly in uh, appeal decisions since then that that is the wrong approach. And that's why John prepared this, this plan. And what he's saying on this plan is the first test is, is the site within a built-up area boundary? If it is, move on. Is it small scale? If it is, move on. Does it respect the character and integrate well? If it does, move on. Is the scheme high quality design? If it is, move on. 
Does it comply with all of the policies? If it does, approve it, irrespective of how many houses have been allowed in that settlement. Now, I know there are, there are five tests in there, and it's absolutely right to go through those five tests and, and test all of them. And if this application fails one of the tests, then it goes straight to refuse. But it's not being refused because there are too many houses in the village. It's being refused because it fails one of those tests. Does that answer the question, Chair? Yeah, Councillor Kendall. Thank you. I'll come back to the point. So what has changed? You're saying that the only thing that's changed is that uh, uh, at several occasions, inspectors have said, well, you're not taking the right approach to the numbers. So therefore, the house design is essentially exactly the same. Um, you, you talk about your number of tests. Who's established whether this is high quality and why have we not consulted the conservation officer? Thank you, Chair. Um, High quality is a matter of, of judgment. Uh, your planning officers have assessed it and evaluated it and come to a conclusion that it is high quality. It's obviously uh, entirely within this committee's remit to decide that it isn't and to have good reasons for making that decision. Uh, you know, that, that, that's, that's the way the system works, but officers have made that assessment. Uh, the application hasn't been referred to your conservation officer because uh, conservation officers' time is limited. Conservation officers spend the vast majority of their time dealing with applications on and within the curtilage of listed buildings. Most of the time, conservation applications, matters relating to conservation, are dealt with by case officers, about, by their managers, who are at least two of us are conservation trained. I'm conservation trained. I am uh, eligible to work as a conservation officer, as is Karen Tate. Um, so we cover it from our general knowledge of conservation. We have the conservation officers there to discuss it with if we need them, but we don't need to consult them because we have adequate skills uh, already within the team. Answer Saint. Yeah, can I take a slight issue with uh, Mr. Barker there? He referred to the chart that uh, John Careford produced as a training exercise. I, I don't recall it, so I presumably didn't go on that particular training session, but that, that's not the point. My experience is this. When we were compiling the local plan, which I was leading on from the member's point of view, we had an inspector with us called Pete Drew. Now, Pete Drew was quite adamant that we should stick to numbers. Therefore, the view came amongst members of this council, and probably some were more prominent at expressing it than others, that effectively they should be applied quite rigidly, and therefore we should have no more than 2,000 houses in LSVs. What actually then happened was that a number of planning appeals took place because we were refusing them because they came outside the rigid interpretation of those numbers. And I haven't got a specific example, I'm just talking in generalisation terms, but, but judging from Mr Barker's reaction, he recalls this situation. And in fact, it was, pleasant, it was planning inspectors that said that we could relax those rules that Mr Drew had encouraged us to hold quite firm. So therefore, um, whilst I accept his his interpretation of Mr. Clifford's uh, diagram that effectively there could be categories of things that says do it on single houses. I do feel quite strongly the view we've had tonight from Harbury is, and there's a village, a local service village in my own ward, which is in a very similar position. It's not a category one, it's a category three, but, but, but they still have boundaries. And there's a feeling amongst the residents of great strength that should be applied to these numbers that Mr Drew said we should defend, which planning inspectors have guided us to do otherwise. And I know we hold a lot of weight on planning appeals and the reports that come from them. Um, but, 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 but the situation is this, that I think we do, I would argue that we do have to effectively at time to say repeat the point that the ward member raised, that we've got a number of open spaces in our conservation areas in Harbury, I think that's what she said, and therefore we want to see them preserved. 
Well, at least that's what the community that she represents wants to see, and I'm getting nods from over there, so I have got that bit right, obviously. Um, and I think we, we do have to give some weight to that, Chairman. It's good to see you've got something right there, Councillor Sait, so thank you very much for that. Chair, Chairman, it's good. I'm sorry, I, I, I do need to come back on that. Um, no, no. I, I, I've said all I, all I can say on the subject of numbers. I, I hear what Councillor Saint has to say. Um, all I know is that what elevates humans um, ab above animals is the, the ability to, to think and to change over time, and that's what's happened. Things have changed over time. Um, as far as the, 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 the other point that Councillor, um, Councillor Saint was making, the, the issue of preserving open spaces in the village. Um, ab absolutely. You know, if the, the open space has such a high value that it should be preserved, that, that is a, a legitimate reason to refuse the application. But you have to set out what that value is. You have to understand what that value is. And officers have looked at this, and they've, they've looked at the value of the space, and they've looked at the value of this, this new dwelling, and they've concluded that actually it will enhance the conservation area. Now, I know that, that you know, people don't agree with officers on that, but that's the recommendation we're making to you. And if you disagree with that, that is, that is entirely your right to do so, providing you can articulate your reasoning. Um, Chairman, there's one other point I, I absolutely must make. Uh, as uh, Councillor Harris said, she, she's been talking to the portfolio holder this afternoon, and I have made a commitment to the portfolio holder to, to explain something to you. Is now a good time to do it, or would you like me to come back at a later stage? It, it's a matter of, of, of going through the neighbourhood development plan policies. I don't think that's a relevant argument, I'm afraid, Councillor Barnes, and I'm, I'm happy for you. Absolutely. It's, it's totally relevant. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I think it, if it's totally relevant and I think we need some clarification, um, I think... But, Jim, uh, uh, at any point you feel I'm, I'm drifting off the subject, feel free to stop me. OK. No, I, I've got absolutely no okay, problem with that. I think that's a fair point. Oh. <laughs> yeah, quite. <laughs> <up. laughs> ba 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 no, what, what I've done, Chair, is I've gone to the Neighbourhood Development Plan. This is a, I know it's a departure for us, but I've gone to the Development Plan, the Neighbourhood Plan, um, and this is the first policy that was referred to, Policy H1, uh, and it says that new housing development will be concentrated within the Harbury Village Settlement Boundary. The site is within the Village Settlement Boundary. So I, I, I don't think there can be any dispute that it complies with that element of the policy. Moving on, you can see new housing will be supported where they, and then there are all of those criteria there. Is it seven criteria? I'm not going to take you through them in, in individual detail, unless you wish to, um, but clearly you can see that the, the first category, unacceptable adverse impact on the parish's rural landscape. I think that was raised by the, the parish councillor in, in his... No? no okay. Uh, it's an issue to consider. Does it have an unacceptable adverse impact on the parish's rural landscape or not? If it does, and you have reasons why, that's a reason for refusal. Second one, does it conserve or enhance the significance of designated and non-designated heritage assets? Does it conserve or enhance the conservation area? You've heard a view from the objectors that it doesn't. You've seen the view of, of officers that it does. That's a discrepancy. So, um, and that's the point where we have to make that judgment the as planning committee. Yes. Yep. Now, th there is just one, Chair, that I, I really do need to, to talk you through, and that's criterion E. Do not lead to the inappropriate development of residential gardens that would cause, cause harm to the village by reason of overdevelopment, significant loss of usable garden spaces for both existing and proposed new properties, and loss of off-street parking. I, I, I don't know, but I, I suspect that that's the critical one from the point of view of the objectors. And I just wanted to talk you through the way that uh, a planning officer, an inspector, or looking at MESA, a solicitor 
would approach that section of the policy. Because you have to take it apart. You, you can't leap at these things. You have to take it apart. So is it inappropriate development of a residential garden? Well, clearly, because it says at the beginning that development will take place inside the village, and the vast majority of the village is residential gardens, there must be some residential garden somewhere that's acceptable for development. So it, it can't just be all residential gardens where it's inappropriate. Um, so it's got to cause harm to the village by reason of overdevelopment. Well, how do you establish that? We've already discussed the garden size. Was it 50 square metres? Um, Something like that. 56, I think. Yeah. 52. Uh, I, thought it was, I thought it was 52. Um, which exceeds the, the, the garden size requirement in your emerging supplementary planning document for a two-bedroom dwelling. So it's not the garden size. In what other way might it be overdevelopment? Um, significant loss of usable garden space. Well, we've heard from the, the applicant that it was sold separately. It isn't garden. But it, it, even if you, you, you categorise categorize it as garden, you could see that a very, very large garden is left for the, the host dwelling. So it, it's not resulting in a significant loss of usable garden space for the existing. The proposed, I've already discussed that, um, and loss of off-street car parking. Again, the applicant went through it. Alison went through it in her presentation. So you can see the, the main criteria that are, are set out in this policy are, all appear to be passed. And if it's all passed, then the, the first part, the inappropriate development of residential garden, must necessarily be passed. You can't just come to the conclusion that it's inappropriate development of residential garden because it's a residential garden. You've got to go through all the other stages. Does, does that make sense? Yeah, I think, I think that makes sense, sense. yeah. Um, I think the points we may have to concentrate on are, B, does it conserve and enhance? And again, that's the, the committee's decision to make a judgment on. And I think, G, are appropriate in terms of size, scale, design, and respect the character of surrounding area which I think, they, again, as we talk about planning, people have different opinions on the same subject. So there is some, some form of subjectivity on these opinions. So there is some, I still feel there's plenty of things we can debate upon. So if you've got no further questions, technical questions for the officers, I'm happy to move on to the debate. Just I was told I had to bring back was what is the difference between the, those two, the original one that was refused and the one was, we are looking at tonight? Um, thank you. There are a number of changes. Um, the roof height has been lowered. Previously it was 7.1 metres to the ridge, now it's 6.6 .6 metres. It's set further back from the road frontage. Previously it was 1.6 metres at um, back from in the bottom corner from the back of the pavement it's now 2.4 metres the, they've retained part of the existing wall along the road frontage um, they replacing the beach hedge the upper <coughs> back windows are now lower and the side windows from the outbuilding are to be filled in um, <coughs> And I think this latest application has now got a bin store and electric charging point for cars. So they, they have responded, although the changes might not seem enormous in the context of a small two bedroom to cottage, they, are, they have responded to the concerns raised previously. Thank you, Alison. Catch the barns. Barnes. Well, I, I live in, well, I don't live in Welford, but I've got Welford on my patch. The planning officer here knows that a lady bought a house, wanted a replacement dwelling, and she wanted another house in the garden. We spent months telling her she didn't like it. We spent months going through what the design is, 
and the right materials. And in the end, we usually get something that is acceptable because, like I said earlier, under the core strategy, we can't stop. We've lost on appeal where we should have, you know, even the parish councils support me in the respect of the type of materials we use, local stone, all that sort of thing. So what we do is negotiate. Isn't that correct? Right, and that is the way forward. As far as I can see, some negotiation has gone ahead. If it was in my village, probably more negotiation. But in planning terms, unfortunately, I've got 143 houses in an 88 uh, um, village, 190 uh, in the outer area. And in Long Marston, I'm supposed to have 32. I've got 476. So, laugh as you might, it is the, the appearance and, and, and the way they look, in my eyes, which, which is the important factor. Um, well, I don't want a slum in my village. That's what happens when you keep filling the gardens up. But uh, as the planning officer knows, we were very strong with the applicant. We told them what we wanted. We told them what we couldn't have. And we ended up with months and months of, um, of talking. And then in the end, she said, oh, it does look better, doesn't it? And you think that's very annoying. So in planning terms, I understand what the, the parish and the board member are saying. But in my eyes, um, it's, it can only be approved, unfortunately. Anybody else wish to? Yeah. Yes, <coughs> Thank you, Chairman. I, I'm sorry, I disagree. I, I just don't think this fits properly. And I'm, I've heard what, what Dale said. Uh, and I think, well, honestly, I think he went a little bit beyond his remit in terms of advice there. But okay, I, I've heard what he said in terms of the neighbourhood plan. I, I personally agree with what the neighbourhood plan said in the earlier point. I think it was the second point down in terms of the impact it will have on the conservation area. So I'm willing to propose that we refuse the application, I think based solely on the fact that it, it will have an adverse impact on the conservation area. I understand what you're saying about the neighbourhood plan, so be it that, that part of my potential objection can't necessarily stand, so I'll just propose adverse impact on the conservation area. I'll see where I'm coming from as well. Um, there were two points on, on the plan. Um, if you could bring those back up again. That yours. Yeah, please. Um, that I... Uh, it's not that there. Oh, yeah. um, oh. Rats. No, there's no rats in this application, I'm afraid. I don't know what I've done. Anyway, uh, whilst we're looking for that... Um, I would be tending. Yeah. Okay. Can, thank you, Councillor Barnes. Whilst, whilst I was looking for that, um, Councillor Kendall slightly stole my thunder. Um, no, not a problem. Um, control panel down the bottom. I think that with this application, it doesn't enhance the conservation area. I'm concerned about the design and. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. I think it was B, it was B in my opinion. I don't think it conserves or enhances the significance of the, the conservation area. And I'm not happy with the design and the, um, the build of the, the materials, etc. etc. So I. Um, I'm tending to go against officer re recommendation to grant on this one because I don't think it's in keeping with the conservation area. Um, so I will be supporting Councillor Kendall's proposal. Was that a proposal? It was. Yes. And I'll be seconding the proposal. Can you expand on what it doesn't concern or enhance? Is it the most of well, space? Is should we, I mean, can I help? I think I, I don't agree that it's a high quality design and I don't think it preserves and enhances the existing street scene or the conservation area. I'm sure you can build up a number of uh, the reason from that based on, I think it's CS8, AS10. I think that's where the bulk of our objections lie. Content. A 
I'm sorry to push, push this, members, but in what way isn't it a high-quality design? In what way doesn't it enhance? Uh, we, don't, uh, we don't feel it is sympathetic to the existing street scene. We don't think it, we don't, I don't feel it really complements, and I don't think it enhances the conservation area. I, I think that's perfectly acceptable in terms of it's an interpretation that this committee or I am making on that application in the same way that officers make the other interpretation. Right, we've had a proposal and a second to refuse the application for, for the reasons we've just mentioned and that was made a note of. Um, no, you carry on. No, no, he didn't, he didn't make a, a, there wasn't a motion there. He just said, did, did you, yes, you should go first then, Chair. Was, uh, have we got a seconder for your... In theory, you're supposed to ask if somebody would second it. I don't think he proposed. May not be anybody. I didn't think there was a proposal there. Can, you, can we just clarify with it? Councillor Barnes, are you making a proposal to... I did make a proposal that as far as I was concerned, uh, it, it, yeah, okay. We've got your, it was okay. It wouldn't. Yeah. It didn't come out very clearly. Reluctantly, but so you're proposing to, uh, the, to, uh, like the opposite recommendation. Have we a seconder for that proposal, Councillor Fielding? So we've got a proposal to grant the application, seconded by Councillor Fielding. All those in favour of the proposal? Two chairman. Against. Three. Three second. We've had a set. Well, we've already got a proposal on the seconder. Uh, we've had a proposal and a seconder by myself and Councillor Kendall to refuse the application. All those in favour? Three chairman. Those against? Abstentions? Two. Two chairman. Committee resolves to refuse application 18 slash 03136 FU. Oh, Chair, Chair the uh, given. detailed wording to be agreed with you tomorrow. That was just took the words <laughs> right out of my mouth now, so thank you. For um, yeah, no, what, next few days. The next few days. Yeah. yeah. Right. We'll move on to our next item. Last item on the agenda, which is 18 slash 03316 slash Verney, 8 of Oast Lane, Harbury, Lumpton Spa, variation of condition 2, etc. And again, Alison will be presenting this application. Right. Thank you, Alison. <coughs> this application is, is a Section 73 variation of conditions application which seeks to vary a 2014 planning permission which granted for the de demolition of a former garage office and the erection of three dwellings in its place. The properties have been built and are now occupied. The application seeks to vary three conditions to do with the approved plan numbers, hard and soft landscaping, and details of the hard landscaping. So first slide shows the position of the application site within the village of Harbury. As you can see, the site lies within the eastern side of the village, but comfortably within the built-up area boundary.
The site lies outside but near to the village conservation area. On this slide, the left-hand plan shows the 2014 approval. The right-hand plan shows the current proposal. Three houses, one detached and a semi-detached pair with gardens to the rear and a car park to the south. So this is the car parking area, semi-detached, detached and gardens to the rear. The relative gardens and parking spaces are highlighted in green and blue. So each individual house's gardens and the car parking spaces are outlined as shown. There's a slight increase in the garden sizes in this proposal. This slide shows the external variations. Both applications make provision for six car parking spaces. A boundary fence has already been erected to the north side of the car park area, which is here. As this results in parking spaces to the left of the picture being slightly too narrow and not in line with the minimum size standards as outlined in the SPD, the developer has agreed to reposition the fence by stepping it in to make the parking area approximately one metre wider. So the fence line would be repositioned up here. This would allow sufficient space for six vehicles to park within the car park. The committee update recommends the repositioning of the fence is controlled by condition to take place within three months should permission be forthcoming. So there's rear access from the car park to the rear of the houses from this point. The 2014 scheme contained a rear path leading from the car park to the rear of each of the three properties, so all the way across. The proposed scheme contains a shortened rear path which only serves the middle property, so from here to here. The southernmost property has its own gate to the rear garden along, along its side boundary adjacent to the house, here. The detached property, this one, does not benefit from a rear pathway any longer. Instead, the occupants have to walk from the car park around the front of the pre pre three properties to access their property. So from the car park around the pavement into their house. It's about 50 metres. In terms of the garden sizes, the proposed scheme would result in a slight increase to the current garden sizes of the southern, southern property. As a result of the shorter rear pathway, the middle plot would benefit from a larger garden area. That's here. And the garden size of the detached property is roughly similar to the previous scheme. The current application proposes additional soft landscaping to the site, which would be controlled by condition. The original 2014 approval contained more planting to the rear boundary along here, which included several trees. This has not been implemented. Instead, alternative planting of shrubs is proposed in a bed along here. The planting to the rear boundary would have been severely limited by space. Any trees planted in this area would have potentially overhung both the gardens and the neighbouring gardens and the pathway. So the approved planting within the garden space of the detached prop property up here in this corner has not been implemented, implemented, although limited alternative planting is now proposed along the rear boundary in this area. There's a change to the northern boundary wall along here. The northern low boundary wall with originally had a gate set opposite the doorway here. 
This has not been built. Instead, a continuous section of stone wall aligns with the side of the dwelling and the gate is positioned five metres to the west. So that's here. So this slide shows the rear elevation of the 2014 scheme. Previously showed two sets of patio doors here. And the new scheme now contains one patio door and one window instead. So slight changes to the internal layout. This side is the approved scheme. This is the proposed scheme. On the ground floor, it's now slightly more open plan and includes the repositioning of the staircase. And on the first floor, the originally approved 2014 application showed each property to have two bedrooms. The current plan shows the master bedroom to have been subdivided to form a smaller bedroom with an adjacent dressing room, which could be used as a third bedroom. Point to note is the draft parking standards require two parking spaces for both a two or a three bedroom property. So the next few slides show some uh, elevations of the existing building. So the deta uh, semi-detached, detached, the existing parking area, open green space to the front, the side elevation of the detached house showing the new stone wall and the access gate. Um, that's the car parking space for six cars to the south. And another view of the car parking area. That's, that's, that's the end of my presentation. Um, Mr Chairman, the recommendation is to approve the application for the reasons detailed on the report subject to the updates. Thank you, Alison. We'll move to our first speaker, and it's Mr L Councillor Lockley again. Long time no see. <laughs> yeah. Um, Alison, yeah, would you mind putting up the, um, the plan, the, the first one, not that one, go back. That one, that one yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, yes, the Parish Council's main objection is about parking and about access to the northernmost detached property. So this new scheme eliminates the footpath from the car parking area to this property and as Alison uh, outlined to us, the re residents of that property would be expected to park in that car park and walk all the way around to their property. In reality, that doesn't happen. In reality, what happens is that the people park on the pavement or on the street and they're right opposite, even though you can't really see it on that plan, they're right opposite a junction. Uh, and that is something that has been ongoing since this house was built. Uh, and it's been exacerbated by the absence of this path. So the residents cannot use this car park and easily access their property. And that's been contrary, obviously, to the design that was approved by Stratford, and that's why we're objecting. It should be noted that the green space that's uh, to the uh, right of the, the property is public land, so that's not there. It's not within their curtilage. That is, I think it's owned by Stratford, actually. Uh, it's not owned by the parish. But I think we maybe cut the grass. Um, so that is the essence of our objection. It's about traffic, really, and parking. Thank you. Any questions for the councillor? Just one very brief. The road, you'll say that people park on near the junction. Yes. Um, irrespective if look, the houses were there, has people parked there in the past? No, because that was it was a it was a it was a garage um, and it had a big big forecourt area to park in, and you can see it on that plan actually. Um, directly to the north is the junction. And so they park on that, opposite that junction, that road junction, and that's where the, road, the cars are parked, because that obviously provides the easiest access to those properties. Okay. And is it, I think Alison said it's an extra 50 metres to walk? I haven't measured it, but that sounds about right. Okay. Yes, because they have to walk all the way around the green space yep. to get there. <laughs> Thank you very much. And we have Linda Richley, and I believe from the Harbury Society. Yes, that will. Society, that will do. And the local residents. Um, You've got three minutes. 
three minutes. Right, you have my apologies. I am re wearing red because I am still extremely angry about the incompetence that has followed through the whole of, of the applications on this site. Um, your officers are is minded to approve the amendments to the problems that we highlighted to you at the outset. You didn't take local knowledge into account and what has followed on is all your fault. Um, the buildings weren't built to the plans approved so that in the here and now we have illegal parking as Tim has said because the car park is inadequate. The bins are left out on the green and the verges because the garden space is so tiny. The prospect of further car parking problems um, will occur because although we told you again initially that there was room for three bedrooms in each of these three houses so that's potentially that's I can't do it uh, three twos are six times three is 18 people 18 cars um, loss of the part of the green we believe that this wasn't built as to the plans, we think, we're fairly certain, having looked on Google, you can look at the original building that was there and you can look at what was built and you will see that it is encroached onto the green, which I believe you own and you have not received payment for. Um, this building intrudes into the views of the conservation area and the church. The minuscule garden space is far smaller than ever the plan shown and it's resulted in the waste bins being left out completely, um, left on the greens, left in the verges and it can't be pleasant for those people who are renting. They have no space for the washing in these tiny little gardens and nothing for recreation. The villages have been left with ugly intrusive building. We can't provide sufficient space for the occupiers or their vehicles. Um, it's caused considerable inconvenience to immediate neighbours. It's reduced the size of the green. It's the only play area for the local children. And because of the lack of parking, vehicles are dangerously parked on our verges. And at that junction, I've sent the officer pictures of these um, and their hazards to other road users. I understand that whoever owns the green is liable and could be surcharged. Um, I don't know what you do about it. Basically, the only thing to do is knock it down and start again, but you're not going to do that. I would be very interested to know what you can do to deal with the, the, the things seconds. that were omitted, the things that have been done that shouldn't have been done, and why action wasn't taken much earlier, because during the build we kept asking for people to come out and look at it, and as far as I know, nothing was done. Okay, thank you very much. Any questions? Oh, sorry, is it Mrs. Ridgely? Oh, how would you like to be addressed? I beg your pardon? Is it Mrs. Ridgely, Mrs. Ridgely? I'm Linda. Linda, thank you. Okay. Any questions for Linda? Don't go yet. No, Any right. Questions? Um, I've got one question. You mentioned the green area. Yes. And I, how do I switch oh, this down? No, it's still on. Um, you just, you were speaking very quickly. Um, and I know you're trying to get all your points. No, it's, in. it's the anger. I'm sorry. I, I did try to calm yeah, down. No, no, no problem. I can fully understand. People do get passionate about planning applications. So, <laughs> nearly as far as I've come, counts the bonds as well. So yes, I, I live in Southam, so it's just as far. Yeah. Anyway, um, you said about the green space, open air play area, and I didn't quite catch what you were saying. Could you just clarify that point? Yes. One of the objectors paid for a professional survey of the site because we were of the opinion that what was proposed couldn't be fitted on the site and that's proved to be true. Um, it brought up things like the fact that they would encroach on the green, the fact that there was space for a third bedroom. It brought out all of these things that and more that you've tried to take enforcement on. Um, that's why people are so very, very angry. But yes, it looks, if you look on Google, you can see the original outline of the building. You look, sorry, you look further back in Google, you can go back in history. If you, you compare the two, you'll, you cut me off. You can see that you, you can draw a straight line and it attends just on the edge of the three uh, cottages on the other part of 
east of House Lane. If you then look at how it is now, it goes two cottages down. So there's a chunk of the green. There's been a, a path put across the green. There's been a path put across the green, which certainly wasn't on the plans. Um, probably to encourage people to walk along there as they can't walk through the gardens. Is that okay? That's fine, thank you. And if there are some enforcement okay. issues, we've got planning officers here. Yeah, I know, I've taken him round. We've noted your comments in there, so, so we will take those on board. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. <laughs> Right. Um, I believe the applicants no longer want to speak. Is that, is that right, gentlemen? Right, so we can now move on to our next speaker, which is Councillor Harris. And I haven't forgotten you this time, oh, Councillor Harris. I'm uh, going to speak about this this evening, but I will just have a quick say. You don't have to if you don't want to. No, I do. I think it's important that I let you know that Harvey Parish Council are very thorough, thoughtful and pragmatic in their approach to planning and I usually support most of their views so I'll be standing behind uh, Mr Lockley's views tonight and objecting. Thank you. Any questions for ward member? No. Good, good. Uh, points of clarification to the officers. Any points of clarification? Chairman, I'm reading on page 78, WCC Highways, it then says no objection, except they then go on to talk about works necessary on the highway to form the access that needs to be up to highway authority standards. Can we inquire about progress with that? But equally, I'd like to ask if the required six spaces are in line with, I think it's part O of the development requirements SPD. Um, and we've referred to other parts of that earlier on today. So are the six spaces adequate for this size of development? Because quite clearly they've got to squeeze whatever they need onto this particular site. There's no I mean, room for anything else. The parking spaces as shown on the plan are 2.4 metres wide by 4.8 metres long, which is slightly less than the new parking standards in part O, which are 5 metres by 2.5. With respect, Alison, that's not the question I asked. I'm referring to the actual quantity of parking spaces. Is six sufficient? I've got a feeling it might not be. Alison, to be fair to her, did mention that in her presentation. She did touch on the fact it was for the, the size of the properties, two to three bedrooms. But I will let Alison answer for, the, for herself. Um, yes, there's two parking spaces allocated for each house. And each two-bedroomed or three-bedroomed house is required to have two parking spaces. And the second part was the progress on the highway. Sorry. On the highway's objection, um, page 78, to do with the, uh, the works on the highways to form the access need to be... It's not an objection, Chairman, it's a qualification. Hmm. And the works to form the access need to be to a highway... Um, the, the access has already been constructed. Um, this application to vary the plans has come in and highways were consulted on the scheme and they would have visited the site and seen the, 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 the scheme as it now is. Um, and if they had had any concerns, they would have raised them then as a new objection. This implies that there were concerns, Chairman, what we've got on our papers on page 78. The 10th of December, which is, what, two and a half months ago, so... Um, we might have actually expected to some work to have been done. Mm -hmm. 
Deputy Assistant. Goodbye. Sorry, Councillor Saint, I didn't hear the last couple of sentences you said. Could you repeat them, please? Yes, what I've said is that the WCC highways have referred to these works on the 10th of December, which is two and a half months ago. And therefore, we could, might have expected some work to be done. But what are we saying that, that this is, or can, or will, or what be done? What we're saying, Chairman, is that there's no objection from the Highway Authority, and if the Highway Authority require any works to be done, they have their own powers to do it. It would be inappropriate for us to try to do their job. Oh, Councillor Fielding. The, the comment made by the, the parish, Anne, is the problem associated with people walking up from the south to the north of the site. Is there not room on the north side to put in a carport there or is it, is it too cramped to actually uh, make access for a couple of vehicles? Chairman, we have an application in front of us which we need to decide. So it's not part of the application, Councillor Fielding? Any further questions? Shall we move on to the debate? Well, it looks to me, if people are lazy, they'll put on weight. If they're fit and well, they'll park in the right place. Um, I can't really see with the County Council and parking. There is enough parking spaces there. There is a bit of a problem, but um, it's not our place to resolve it. So as far as I'm concerned, I can go along or propose the officer's recommendation. Anybody else wish to, to comment? If you go, I'll just to second what Councillor uh, Barnes has said. I completely understand uh, what Linda said, and I think she's got a very good point. It's an ugly development, but I feel that we've fought that battle and it's been lost already. It's not that I don't have sympathy for the parish and for you, Linda, as well, but it's been done. We are where we are. I, s I second the proposal. Thank you, Nate. We've had a no further items to the debate. We've had a proposer and a seconder that the application is granted. All those in favour? Unanimous, Chair. Committee resolves to grant application 18 slash 03316 slash fair. Could, could, we, uh, could we ask the officers to look at what these ladies can concerns are about what hasn't and hasn't yeah, been done. Yeah, we could refer it to the enforcement we, team. We did be good. have a commitment. Okay. Uh, any items of... No. There's no any other business, so all urgent business, I will close the meeting. Thank you.